Hi, I'm Nicola Cairncross. Welcome to my podcast. This is where we talk about entrepreneurship, digital marketing, being a digital nomad, and much, much more. I really hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to this week's podcast. A little bit different. Um, we've got a blog post called All About Intuition, and we're gonna I'm gonna share with you the audio of my what worked, what didn't, and what's changing, which is a video I'm doing weekly now live on Facebook. I'm thinking about doing it live on YouTube as well, but that's sort of usually towards the end of the week. Then I'm going sort of gonna share with you the intro from our new podcast I'm doing with Matthew Moody who is someone who I did some work for over the last month, and we got on really well. We've known each other for quite a long time. Starting a new podcast called Make It Make Sense, where we talk about what's happened during our weeks, and then we also talk bring a topic each, where I bring a topic for Matthew that he doesn't know what it is, and he brings one for me, and I don't know what it is, and we talk about it. So if you like the sound of the introduction, which is just basically both of us giving a bit of an introduction about um, why we're there, who we are and why we're there. You might know my story or what part of my story already, but you might not. And if you like it, go over on to YouTube and find Make It Make Sense with Nicola Cairncross and Matthew Moody. And I want to talk to you today about following your intuition in business. A lot of people have been taught by school largely to ignore their intuition and um, I don't know if any I don't even hear many parents talking about it but I have got a very strong sense of intuition and I'll give you an example of that I woke up this morning at 4 45 a.m went to the bathroom and came back and lay there and I was wide awake and I couldn't work out why because I usually sleep very very well and for some reason my subconscious had surfaced the idea that I needed to introduce two of my friends um, one of is one of whom is a long term business friend and he's moving from one country to another and he's going to live in a specific city in Spain. And he is great fun and I don't see him often enough and he really is an amazing person and so is his wife. So then I was thinking, well, my other friend is going to move out there and it's really weird that they're both going at the same time. And as I was lying there trying to puzzle over why I was thinking about this, I suddenly thought I've got to introduce them. I've got to. And it just seemed so strong. It was such a powerful feeling. I, I had to get up in the end. I, I lie there. I lay there for about 4.45, so 5 o'clock. I lay there for about an hour trying to go back to sleep. And I'm usually pretty good at doing that too. But I just couldn't rest until I got up and had a shower and, and got to my computer because I knew I was going to have to do some sort of long typing to introduce them both and, um, you know, tell her about him and him and about her and, and you know, all that stuff. So I knew it was going to be easier on my laptop, which meant getting up, which meant getting showered, because I knew if I didn't and I sat down at the computer, then it would be lunchtime before I got sorted out myself. So that's never a good feeling. So I got up and I did. I had a coffee and I had a shower and I had a coffee and I came to the computer. And I did it and they were both really pleased to hear from me, which was nice. But they were also really pleased to be introduced. And they're moving to this city it, within the same week. It's so bizarre. It must be it must be something they must be destined to work together or something um she's a film producer and he's a raging entrepreneur and he's in between um businesses at the moment i think he's just trying to hang out and have a good time with his wife because i keep seeing um instagrams and from all over the shop going to more cheaper the other night and having fabulous dinners in fabulous restaurants but the other the other friends really outgoing and really sociable and really dynamic and entrepreneurial and i just know they're going to get on And the other benefit for me, of course, is that with two friends in one city, I'm very likely to go and visit. You know, and also it's been a bit up and down the last few years, hasn't it, with the whole travel thing. Although I did manage to squeeze in Greece, Mexico and El Salvador one year (laughs) in a very short space of time. The point of this video is to talk about intuition in business. And whenever I've had a strong intuition like that, it's always ended up really, really well. I never get strong intuitions like that about things not to do. I get strong intuitions like that about things to do. For example, when I bought my hotel, I remember it so vividly. I was lying in the bath and I was reading Rags to Riches Through Real Estate by Russ Whitney. And I read to the bit where you start. he started buying property, no money down. And I thought, I remember thinking, I wonder if we could do that in the UK. And then I thought, Ooh, I'm going to get up and go and get a, a, the local paper and see if I can find some bargains and anyone who might be a motivated seller. And weirdly enough, the building, the bus- business and building I ended up buying, no money down, was 
um, a bed and breakfast that had previously been lived in by my mother. It, she'd lived in one half of it. So when I saw it in the in the paper up for sale, I was like immediately recognised it and thought, oh, my God, it must be a sign. <laughs> so the next morning I went round, I rang the owner and went round to see it that afternoon, Sunday afternoon. And I then the next morning, I rang my bank manager at eight o'clock in the morning. I said, you've got to come and see this business I found. And I think I can do a really good deal with it. And I want the bank to get involved. So and they did eventually I had to we had a little toing and froing on on the amount they were going to get put in. But it ended up being I ended up buying a half a million pound hotel, 12 bedrooms, no money down. And on the same day, I got the letter from the bank to say, yes, they were going to fund fund it. I got a letter from someone else saying, no, I couldn't have a credit card for a thousand pounds, which is just so ironic. And I've never forgotten that either. But that was a really strong intuition feel. Um, I get intuitions when I meet people. So I feel like a shock of recognition. We could talk about that a little bit more because I did just did a blog post about it. Recognition is recognition, which is re, which means again, cognition means seeing someone recognizing someone and so when you recognize someone you're actually feeling like you've met them before and I'm sure you're going to be able to identify with this and several times in my life I've met boyfriends like that and I've met business partners like that and I've met clients like that people who go on to become very important in my life I usually feel this jolt of energy this sort of recognition feeling that I've met them before, I've, I've spoken to them before. or So whether it's that they're projecting an energetic field that resonates with my energetic field, and I never thought I'd be talking about this 10 years ago, or whether it's that you've actually met people in a previous life, depending on your beliefs, um, and, and you literally are recognising them. All of my closest friends, I've had this jolt of recognition when I first met them. But, uh, when I met, met my ex-husband, when I met Steve, who went on to become my my partner, but at that time was running a restaurant, my favourite restaurant, um, and he became the manager of the hotel, funnily enough. So there's always been this jolt of recognition, this this frisson of energy when when you meet someone that's going to be important to you in life and business. So I'd love to know your comments. Does this ever happen to you? Do you take notice of it when it does? Do you feel the recognition in your Head, your heart, your gut. For me, it's like a boom, straight to the gut. And then when I think about those people, I get a, a warm, fuzzy glow in my heart area. So that's, oh, that's all about chakras, isn't it? I don't really know very much about those. But it's never an intellectual decision. It's always a physical response to, it must be someone's energy field. That's all I can think. Yeah, can't think of what else it can be. But it's always worked out well. As I say, very rarely get intuitions about not doing things. It's always about things that I should do. So I got up, crack of dawn, here I am, getting everything done, which is really a very nice bonus as well. On And uh, I've already introduced my two friends. They've had a little chat and uh, they're going to get together, which is really cool. I can go and visit them, which is even cooler. Hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you'd like me to talk about anything in particular. And I will speak to you very soon. Always a good move to turn the camera on, I find. <laughs> For my weekly checking in session, uh, got to confess, I didn't want to do it today, but I won't. I don't want to let you guys down. I don't want to let myself down. And that's uh, that's why I'm pushing forward with it. So what's the format? Basically, it's the thing I do every week, but in written format. But I'm going to I like to do a video and um, it's what's worked what didn't and what's changing and there's quite a lot of good tips to share with you this week so I'm quite excited for this one in spite of the fact I had to really push myself to do it so what worked this week um I have been experimenting with google ads for youtube videos I was getting a bit sick of youtube not really showing my videos to anyone like literally two to eight ten twelve views so I thought I wonder if it's possible to get your video your new video in front of more people using google ads so you go in and you set up a campaign and you set up the campaign for conversion and you don't ask, you don't follow any of Google Ads suggestions. You choose the bottom right hand um, selection, which is don't follow any template. And then you go and you set up an audience and you set up an audience of the people who you want to watch your videos and you set up four conversions, as I say, and that means that it's going to you're going to pay not by how many people your video is shown to, but how many people actually take some action, i.e. click through to watch your video. And I was quite frankly expecting it to be pretty rubbish. 
I set a low budget, five pounds a day. And I chose my audience carefully by uh, interests and age. And then I went and got ChatGPT to create the, I, I chose my first three to five headlines myself. And then I fed those into ChatGPT because they also want you to put in 90 character headlines as well as the 30 character headlines and also a 90 character description. And um, basically they show different combinations of the three to five headlines and descriptions you choose. Uh, in, depending on which platform it's being shown on. And I haven't delved that deep into where it's being shown. So uh, they show your video. That's the thing. You use the URL of your video as the ad content and they show some of your video. And I found that you can actually show a video that's longer than three minutes. They do recommend three minutes or under, but all of my videos are longer. So um, unless I make a special uh What's the word trailer for each video then and then use the trailer in the google ad then um, i'm not going to do that yet i'm trying to find out if it works so first of all what it's done is it shot my subscriptions to my channel through the roof quite well through the roof i'm being a bit dramatic there shot the subscriptions to my channel through the magic 1000 number which i am not joking i've been trying to do for the last two years but trying to get people to subscribe to your channel is really, really hard. But this traffic seems to do it. Um, I get likes on the videos and I get views on the videos. Now, yeah, they are watching. Some of them are watching. Not as many as would have done if they'd come organically, but some enough for watching so that it's not skewing the numbers too much. Because, of course, what you really want is you want a good conversion from um, view to a good conversion from click to view, and then you want a good number of people watching. So it has definitely pushed up my watch time. Um, so I'm quite happy with it so far. And what it does, it makes your channel not look so Billy No Mates when people arrive. <laughs> so I'm running um, how many new videos? I think I'm putting up two new videos a week on the channel. And I'm running um, just a five pound a day budget to whichever one is the latest video so that's what i'm doing with that and that's working quite well um the other thing that's working is i've been using i used my new chat gpt bot kind of thing um that i've set up to appeal to my ideal clients so i've been through quite an extensive process of feeding information in about my ideal client and, and i'm very lucky because i've got several ideal clients that i can have in mind um, and then what you do is you tell ChatGPT to ask you questions to get a really so it gets a really good sense of who your ideal client is. Then you get it to tell you what your ideal client's um, concerns are and worries are. And then you can then get it to tell you that, you know, what kind of videos you could make for to allay, you know, to, to help the, your ideal client and then put that through the AdWord process to get more traffic to videos. And what you do then is you have a call to action in the description and you mention the call, the call to action in the videos. Um, and you can even put the call to action in the first line of the description. I'm not doing that often because I like to SEO my videos so that after I finished running the ads, the videos still stand a chance of being picked up by the YouTube and then the Google search engine. So in order to SEO your videos properly, you need to run through a five step sequence, which I am I teach all my clients. So, yeah, so that's been really good. I mean, just the whole thing of writing five different headlines and five, three, five different descriptions would have stopped me in my tracks. I'm not very known for my detail, you know, attention to detail like that. So that's really worked getting um, ChatGPT to write those for me. And especially when ChatGPT has got my ideal client in mind and knows their problems, pains, worries and, and, and all that stuff. So really good. Now, if you want to get your ChatGPT chat gpt it's hard to say if you want to get your chat gpt to do this for you then do come on over to the website at nicolacarenext.com because i'm giving away my prompts on how to get chat gpt to do that so i get you started with how um how it builds your ideal client scenario and then there's a second giveaway which i give to you if you go through the first one because i like to make people jump through a few little hoops to get all the freebies um, and then I'm actually seriously thinking of putting on a one day virtual workshop 
of how you can use chat gpt and google ads and you know youtube to really get your business marketing going so if you'd be interested in that that then please just comment below saying um what would what we call it we call it the ai workshop if you're interested in a one day virtual workshop with um learning sections and doing sections then do let me know by putting ai workshop in the comments below and we'll see how much um interest we get from that right so all that worked what else has happened here yeah, creating content i mean i've i've really cracked this now um basically i got chat gpt to write me an outline of a blog post um, I wanted up to a thousand words. I wanted three recommended reading and I want books and I wanted uh, five practical action steps that people could take. And then what it did was it, it chewed through the the problems and challenges that my ideal client is facing or feeling and created 14 um I did 20, 20, can't remember. I think I did multiples of seven. So I did 14 blog posts addressing those challenges or problems. Um, and then I took them and I added to them. So I rewrote them. And oh, the other thing I did was I fed in my writing style to chat GPT on another document and I got it so it knows how I write. I, I fed in some blog posts, I fed in some transcriptions of videos, and it now knows how I like my blog post written so it sort of roughed out some blog posts for me based on the because I'd never have done this I'd just never have done it it would have been too dull and too long time consuming and I just wouldn't have done it so it's actually creating content for me that I can then personalize and really you know if it suggests a book I don't agree with I can change it uh, if it suggests an action step I don't like or, or I think could be improved on then I can change it so it's what it's doing is it's creating the sort of basic structure for me, which I can then take and make better. But it's doing it with my ideal client in mind and it's doing it based on my writing and speaking style, which is just unbelievable when you think about it. So I think that would be a very cool um, virtual workshop to do. Um, and it's it's you know it's giving me solid content every single week that I can make sure that I can put onto um, my blog. And then I can read it out to create a podcast episode. And so it really is starting to gear up a, a machine of really good quality content geared to my ideal client. What didn't work this week? Oh, loads of things didn't work. <laughs> There's always loads of things. When you're trying as much as I am, trying different things. Um, my first thing that didn't work today was my poor, poor podcast co-host for our new podcast, Make It Make Sense. Um, he's just really struggling with Wi-Fi. He's got Wi-Fi in his house and Wi-Fi in his guest house, and he just completely cannot seem to get a, a decent Zoom connection at all, which is a real problem if we're going to do a weekly um, podcast. But he's just going to have to find somewhere locally that he can go that's got a good Internet connection. It's only an hour a week after all, an hour and a half a week. Um, so paying for two Wi-Fi connections that don't work must be excruciating. And he can't even get Starlink going because he's so far out in the country, surrounded by trees. He'd have to get up a, 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 and get his Starlink on a pole 30 feet, foot off the ground, apparently. So I've said to him, look, just get a workman in to do it. Get one of those aerial people in to fix it up for you because it's it's got to be done, really. Um, what else isn't working? Oh, I had a real downer this week with the ever cre creeping closer bird flu narrative they're trying to push on us i mean they're just they're using pcr tests that don't work they're just they just want anything they can do to get people taking more it just puts a real downer on me and uh how did i get out of that i listened to some om music i'm quite getting quite good at meditating just with the breathing thing but i found i listened to some om music on youtube the other day and it really did help to get rid of the anxiety now the problem is when you're running a business that depends entirely on getting onto social media it's hard to avoid the, the doom and gloom stuff that you see when you go on social media so it's a real conundrum for me but the om meditation helped a lot so i'm going to practice that every day now i'm going to do 15 minutes of listening to om um music and it's set the sort of background music's really nice too and just go onto youtube and search om sounds and you'll find some stuff it's really good i like it a lot um what's changing well that's one of the things that's changing doing a 15 minute om meditation every day 
Um, the other th two things I've come across this week that you might find of use is I was talking to a potential client and he was saying that he wanted his multi-page website turned into a one-page website. And I said, what, what, why do you want to do that then? I said, surely it's easier to have it in short pages that people can consume. And he said, well, yeah, but I've been watching some of my friends when they say, what, what's your website? And they go to the website and they really like the look of it, which is great because I created it for him. And But they, they keep doing this. They don't even think to click the burger at the top. They don't even realize what the burger is, that it's a menu. And I suddenly struck me, my God, you know, when most people are looking at your um, website on a mobile or a tablet, most people on a mobile, to be honest, judging by Google Analytics, you'd have to check this. Go and check your Google Analytics to see which um, device most people are arriving at your website on. If it's a mobile phone, then you need to think about this. You need to think about getting everything on your page, on your front page, as obvious as possible. So I'm not saying have your entire sales page on your front page. I'm, I'm saying make sure there are very obvious links to go through to find out more onto your, you know, the sales page or the uh, about page or the page that lists their different options. Make sure there's a very obvious link to that on your front page or try and make um, menus that are not going to turn into hamburgers because these Hamburger menus just simply aren't working for the average scroller. They really aren't. You know, they want to scroll down and see it all on one page or at least see links or buttons that they could click to go through and find out more about things. So that's a big revelation I've had this week. And if you've lasted through this um, video, then you've got a massive hot tip there. So the other thing that's changing is... Um, Literally, I was watching a thing about this whole YouTube thing last night because I've got a bit more interested in it again. And he was I was watching um, Judy's husband. Now, anyone who's been remotely interested in vlogging knows about Judy's world. My daughter introduced me to it. She was a makeup vlogger who then turned into a mummy vlogger. And I know that Phoebe was watching it for quite a long time. Anyway, her husband does a podcast on YouTube and he does it with this other chap. And they were talking about this thing. Um, it's a new style of vlogging, which is a lot less. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot less. It's a lot less edited, to put it that way. It's a lot more casual. It's a bit more long form. It's it's the kind of thing I watch when I watch my um, Portuguese homesteaders. And what he was saying was that if you are you're not aiming to get to number to be the number one in your in your category. What was the category he was talking about? Oh, he does um, cooking, a cooking show. And he goes off to a what's the big um, wholesalers? Like we got one in the UK and I got Costco. Is it Costco? No, it's a wholesaler for the um, hospitality and, and hotel trade. And they go off to these wholesale places. And apparently there are people who make vlogs about it. I mean, I just what are people making videos about nowadays? But anyway, he so he makes. He made a vlog that was all about going around the professional wholesalers for his catering business and saying the kind of bargains you can get, you know, holding up like five litre things of of soy sauce and talking about the uh, the cost savings you can make. But what he was saying was that you do, you're not trying to be the number one. I wish I could remember the name of the damn thing. Let's say it's Costco, but it's not Costco. Um he was he was saying that he's not trying to be number one vlogger in the Costco category. What he's doing is he's looking to be the video that someone who's watched the number one vlogger and then come away from YouTube. When they come back, YouTube suggests more videos for them to watch based on their previous viewing. And what he's looking to do through search engine optimization techniques, which I can teach you, is to become the one that gets shown the next time, the number two, he called it, when number two visit. He's looking to become the one that gets um, shown, suggested when someone comes back and they've previously watched the number one video. So I thought that was really interesting. So you're going to see um, a big upswing in traffic on your YouTube videos if you make sure they're thoroughly SEO'd and I'm going to go back over my YouTube videos because I've spent quite a lot of time swapping the titles and swapping the thumbnails so I'm not absolutely sure if 100% of them are very very well SEO'd anymore so um, you know I was looking to try and get trying to get attention at the beginning of the of video's life 
And now what I'm going to do is try and give the video a second life by making sure the SEO is correct on it so that if somebody searches on the topic, that's the key thing is each video should be about a specific topic. And I'm going to make sure that the SEO on that video is good for that topic. And it's about making very niche videos that get shown to people who are interested in that topic, not necessarily the first time they come on and look and do a search, but the second time when they come back. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, that's it. What's what's worked quite a bit? What hasn't? Quite a bit. And what's changing? Just the odd one or two things, tightly targeted actions. That's what we're doing this week. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you like the sound of the AI workshop, I'll probably do it on a Saturday. You know, it'll be broken up again into uh, learning slots and, and taking action slots and then Q&A slots as well. So I think that would be quite a fun thing to do. I'll do it on Friday or a Saturday, depending on. And if you're, if you're interested, just put AI workshop in the bottom and then also put which day you'd prefer, whether it would be a Friday or a Saturday. Day. And I'll let you have some information. Speak to you next week. Bye. Ta -da! Hello, hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. All right. An intro off the cuff. An intro. <laughs> and don't forget to mention your bed and breakfast for God's sake. <laughs> I'm always really crap at intro as well. Give it a go. Go on. Then. I'm Matthew Moody, and I have the pleasure of being a co-host on this brand new amazing podcast which I'm particularly stoked about, to be honest, because it's great to be able to talk about like-minded issues with people that get it. bit about me, from Yorkshire originally, son of a policeman uh, and a housewife, uh, fabulous growing up in Yorkshire. Highly recommend if you've not been to God's country, you should, because if not, you're missing out. And for my sins, I moved to Oxford to do a degree in theology, which is like, woo, that's a bit strange. But it's one of those things where... You kind of get into a situation of doing a particular degree because at the time you're in a, a culture, a, a programming. And that's one of the things I'd love to talk about later on is programming because I'm seeing it all the time at the moment. But anyhow, I uh, had a great time in Oxford, as one does, and then went and started working in business, which has got nothing to do with theology whatsoever. So I've been working in business and property uh, since '96. So quite a few years now, and when you look back at it and think of all the changes, the technological marvels that have happened in that time period, it's pretty incredible, to be fair. Yeah. How did Nicola and I meet? Well, that's an interesting story. So we know that there's a couple of joint friends who are crazy people uh, <laughs> and used to organise the most ridiculous masterminds over in Las Vegas. It's one of those things where you need a holiday to recover from it, uh, and particularly your liver, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd heard about you, and, and I think I'd come across you before on on, on the, the Money Gym or one of your other things that you've done in the past. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd heard of your name, and, but I'd not actually met you before. And we were at this mastermind, which was an insane one. This was one where we went to Liberace's mansion and sat in gold plates. Oh, that was the we, best one. <laughs> we, we had an, a, a desert party in the middle of the desert going round on. Like, With real camels. We were real camels and just hurtling across the desert in jeeps. You know, so many things that were happening. And obviously there was, you know, actual mastermind and content, of course. But uh, we, we kind of interacted over the week, but we didn't really meet me until the last day at the mansion party. Uh, and I just thought, oh, I'm just going to go and talk to Nicola. And we sat down and had a really good chat. It's like, why didn't I do this five days ago? Because then we could have just been comparing notes across the week. But anyhow, that's that's how it kind of happened. And oh, okay. uh, we uh, kind of kept in contact uh, since then because we've been part of a, I guess, ongoing webinar series, again, hosted by one of our good friends uh, on rational thinking, uh, which is another yeah. interesting Something topic. Something I'm not known for. <laughs> <laughs> well... It's, it's 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 an interesting one, isn't it? Rational thinking. Yeah. Most people don't do it. And most recently, yes, uh, we've been working on uh, a very exciting project, which was when I had stood to become uh, elected to the Houses of Parliament as an MP for Reform UK uh, in uh, in my area, Penrith and Solway. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working on that uh, over the last six, seven weeks, and it's been absolutely fantastic having someone that actually gets what social media is about. I'm Nicola Cairncross. I live in Shoreham by Sea, and I grew up on the South Coast, and I've always been interested in everything, nosy some might say. 
Um, <laughs> I've always been, I've always known I wanted to be self-employed. So from the age of about 12, I was out doing horrible jobs, but also teaching myself to sew so that I could um, make clothes for myself that I couldn't afford because I grew up in a working class background like yours. And, and then I ended up going to art college and, and making new romantic waistcoats for boutiques locally and putting myself through college doing that because I was a mature student. I don't know how you, how mature you are at 21, but I was older than the other kids. So I did have some sort of semblance of a work ethic, having worked in Southern Water and hairdressers for a long time. Bought my first house at 18 with my friend Kim, who was 19. And she had she was a self-employed hairdresser. She had all the money and I had the job at Southern Water. So we bought a three bedroomed house with a dining room and um, a kitchen and breakfast room. So it actually slept for and still had a living room um, and f- and five if we just used the breakfast room. So we filled it full of others. Chris the Punk was a notable tenant <laughs> who taught me all about David Bowie. To it, We bought him at 27500 and now it's worth over 500000 So that particular house and that particular road. So I always thought it wasn't for me because I didn't have any money. And then I read a book called Rags to Riches Through Real Estate by Russ Whitney. And he talked about how he first started buying properties no money down while he was slaughtering hogs for $5 an hour. (laughs) And uh, I thought, I wonder if you could do that in the UK. And the first thing I went out and bought was a 12-bedroom hotel, very run down from um, 20-odd years. And he was looking to get out. So we had a motivated seller. We had a rundown property that was structurally sound. We had the potential for a business in a freehold property. And because I'd read that book and been to several workshops like Rick, Rick Otten, you know, uh, We Buy Houses. <laughs> oh. Do you remember him? And um, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to your next uh, portrayal of a, an accent. And you know that uh, it's like singing. You know, it sounds great in my head, and then when it comes out, it's terrible. But I I have a go anyway. (laughs) So yeah, and I bought this property um, in early two thousand. Yeah, I I went to my bank manager. I I put a business plan together. He said yes initially. The bank said no. We rejigged the offer and managed to buy it. Yeah. And then I, I was already teaching people how to do things with money as I was learning because I reached a, a, an epiphany point, really sick of being skinned, sick of working hard, sick of ne- getting nowhere, sick of always having to go and get shit jobs and um, not getting anywhere because I'm, I'm a, a, an entrepreneur. You know, I, I want to make things happen. I want to move, move fast. I want to – the hotel was a brilliant opportunity for me. And that's one day I remember sitting in the front room of the hotel and thinking – I could combine what I'm teaching people into a a program, a one-year program, and I could have people come and have workshops at my own hotel. And that was when the Money Gym was born. And that day was a complete epiphany day. I, I, I had the idea. I worked out the details. And then I wrote an email out to my mailing list that I'd been building up since 98, email mailing list. And um, I sent it out and I came back to 64 grand's worth of business, people just signing up on the spot. And that was a life changer. Well, the hotel was a life changer to start with because it made me realize how the money system works. The same day I got a letter telling me I could have 300 grand for the mortgage on the hotel. I got a letter from Branson's Virgin credit card company saying um, you can't have a credit card for a thousand pounds. So I really hope you enjoyed this week's um smorgasbord of a podcast <laughs> and, uh, and i'll be back next week with the usual uh blog post audios and see what you think i'd love to hear your feedback so do come on over you can just email me nicola at nicolacarenext.com or you can come over to any of my social media platforms and t- chat to me there speak to you soon bye you've been listening to nicola Cairncross of nicolacarenext.com well i hope you enjoy the show today We've got lots of resources on the website, so do come over to check them out. And by all means, feel free to book yourself into my diary at nicolacarenext.com forward slash diary. I love to talk to entrepreneurs. 